So, hello. Uh, I'm Janus Keller and this is the Out of the Blue podcast, a podcast about everything great that is coming out of uh, the, the TU Delft and uh, specifically the Faculty of Industrial Design and Engineering. And today we're at the Green Village with Professor Connie Bakker, uh, Professor of Methodology of Sustainable and Circular Economy, if I'm right. The word design is missing. Oh, design there, methodology. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so welcome. Um, you are going to be doing your inaugural speech uh, in Friday, the May 10th, mm -hmm. together with Rut Mugge, who was together our guest Rutte. in uh, an earlier episode of Out of the Blue. Mm -hmm. So funny that you're doing it together. Uh -huh. Why is that? Well, it's because we were appointed as professors more or less in the same period. We are both graduates from the Faculty of Industrial Design and Engineering. We are, we are one of the few who have managed to, 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 to climb, if you like, yeah. from being a graduate from this faculty to becoming a professor. Uh, and we both have a sustainability topic. So yeah. we thought it would make perfect sense to do this together. And it's not because we're two women, because many people of course say this, you know, why don't you take your own yeah, stage? And, and, uh, and I never thought of that. Honestly, I didn't. I just thought it, it would be a great opportunity to, to actually to put ourselves on the stage to make a real point for sustainable design. Yeah. And, uh, that's why. Well, I, t I totally agree. I, I just got shocked when I received a message uh, from the board that I could uh, see Red Mugge's inaugural speech on the same day that you would be. So I was thinking, oh no, I have to choose and I <laughs> cannot choose anymore. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I don't have to choose. <laughs> no. So that's wonderful. Uh, so we are at the, this is the Green Village. And, uh, and uh, I have been here once before, but can you tell me what this place is? Yes, I've actually only been here once before too. Yeah, that's <laughs> so good. Uh, I'm not totally, uh, completely up to speed. But what I love about this place, and which is really wonderful, is that it is like a, a playground yeah. for new experiments and for sustainable experiments in particular. So you may have seen the Hyperloop back there. Yeah, I've seen that so one. So that's the prototype, which is of course a, an amazing thing coming out of TU Delft yeah. to revolutionize transports. And there's the living lab back there, yeah. where we can, where actually us as a faculty, we can also do experiments there. Changing people's lifestyles, experimenting with new products, new systems, and I saw just when I came in a new new project being built, something to do with water uh, retainment, water capture, in public roads, ah, and okay. uh, apparently there's an, I, I haven't read it completely, but there was something about we have a real problem with yeah. water. So but so clearly uh, yeah. you sort of smell architecture. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and then there's civil engineering yeah. and so different faculties and uh, photovoltaics, uh, solar yeah, power. Exactly. So it, it's a showcase yeah. and, uh, and it has this positive vibe about it. It shows like, yes, we can do it, yeah. which we need. We yeah. definitely need it, yeah. yes. And, 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 uh, and, uh, but this is not uh, totally not owned by the... Uh, actually, the, our faculty doesn't, isn't involved in this that much, right? Uh, or I don't, not enough, probably. Yeah. yeah. I think we were one of the founders, if I remember correctly. At least at, at one point we were part of the group discussing the fact that this should be here. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't heard much about it lately. So no. maybe that's also my fault. Hmm. Yeah, so, so there are so many opportunities. But uh, uh, I, in my... Uh, uh, memory, I think uh, the sustainability at our faculty was uh, the sort of the earliest and sort of the biggest and sort of the most impactful group mm. very early yeah. on in the world, yeah. right? True, true, yes. It was quite a revolution when the first professor of sustainable design was appointed, who was Han Brezet. Yes. That was, when was that? Hmm. Somewhere around 1990, 1992 ish. Yeah. yeah, I think 1992. And then a real factory yeah. of PhDs coming out yeah. of. Uh, one after the other. Yeah, yeah. and very interesting uh, topics, right? Yeah, yes, actually, right, one of the first was um, when I, f I remember at least was already looking at hydrogen fuel cells, which is now coming back into focus again. Yeah. We had p uh, students doing, uh, there was also one doing car sharing. Oh, wow. Way before its days, and now it's normal. Yeah. And then it was really weird, and people also were looking at this guy like, what is he doing? Yeah. So, and I was one of the first, actually, to do a PhD on this topic. Yes. Yeah. 
because you were earlier than the, than Andrzej was here. Yeah. So you were already sort of the yeah. the, the only one doing uh, sustainability. Yeah. And and you got incorporated in the bigger organization, right? Not exactly. Oh. No, I, I graduated. Yeah. I remember that. I know. When I graduated actually at uh, at KLM. Okay. So not exactly a sustain. No. Uh, like well. one of the front runners of sustainability, not really. No. But uh, during that graduation period, there was this. This, this, this was these news items everywhere, like, you know, hole in the ozone layer, acid rain, which yes. is then still a problem, yes. you may remember. And then, of course, the first news items about global warming, yeah. which they called the greenhouse effect yeah. in those right. days. Yeah. And then I was, I sort of woke up, like, you know, I was sort of like sleepwalking through my studies and doing the things. I, and, I, and all of a sudden I found a purpose. Ah. That sounds really boring, maybe, yeah. but, um, or bland, but that was it. I was like, this is what I want to do. And uh, then I organized a lecture evening at the faculty. Yeah. So um, to, to, yeah, to, to, to sort of set the stage for this topic and see whether others also found it interesting or important. And, and when we advertised it, I all of a sudden realized that it was during Champions League uh, football, football or something. And I was like, oh my God, nobody is coming. This was a bad thing. And the, the room was full. Yeah, because so, um, yeah. people that don't like soccer yeah. do like sustainability maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Never thought of that. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I've got something here and I want to continue with it. But then uh, there was nothing on the faculty for me, of course, to keep working. So I moved away and I went to work for TNO yeah. because they also had, had sort of heard of this topic and they were like, well, let's hire into new graduates and let's see what they can come up with and advise our designers because I was working then at TNO Product Center, which was yeah, a yeah. design consultancy oh. within Near the river, near somewhere. the river, yeah, yeah, yeah. within there. TNO. So me and my colleague Seem Huffmans, yeah. um, we started and started sort of building our knowledge on eco design and started giving the designers advice. And after one year, they told me like, if you want, because we found some money, you can do a PhD, and then you have three years to finish it, but you can do it. And I was like, and as yeah. a TNO employee, as a TNO employee, yeah. So then I was like, oh, let's try that, let's do it. But then I had to find a promoter. And that wasn't easy, but because nobody at the Faculty of Industrial Design actually wanted to be a promoter then, because of course they had no knowledge of no. this topic. So um, I had to go shop around. And the funny thing was because my graduation mentor was Jan Jacobs. Yes, you remember, you know yes him, right? definitely. So, uh, most people will do know, but he told me like, you know, sustainability, eco-design, oh yeah, this is something that's gonna go away in a couple of years. It's all in the news now, but it will go, it's a hype cycle. Do, don't, don't get started on this, you know, well. it's, it's not the future. I like, oh, thank you. And uh, in the end, I found a promoter at uh, TPM, um, oh, yeah. Vergracht. Was that already existing, TBM then? I think it was called differently. I think it was even part of an, I can't remember, no. honestly, I can't. And, um, but he was really good. And then as, we as, the, as the thesis progressed, uh, and th then it was about 1992, and then Han Luzet was appointed, yeah. and he joined the committee. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think I was his first PhD yeah. to get a title. Yeah, and then the doctorate. title itself? Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> Environmental Information for Industrial Designers. Yeah. We didn't even call it eco-design in those days. So and it was uh, very uh, much focused on, on sort of the tools you need as a designer yeah. for life cycle analysis? Yes, yeah, the first life cycle analysis was developed. We call it life cycle assessment nowadays, but then it was still life cycle analysis. Yeah. And the first tools were developed and I started testing them to see, you know, how, how do designers incorporate these methods into their design work? Yeah. And uh, what can I learn from that about developing better methods? And yeah. one of the main conclusions actually was that designers are very capable of incorporating these methods in their work. But what we actually needed to do was move towards a more strategic level. So the designers should become engaged in, in strategic decision making uh, at a much earlier stage because that's where you can make the difference. You mean uh, the business models? Yes, the business and models, yeah. Uh, and sort of the whole uh, sort of repair, rent, IDs. Well, that was that was still not really in the picture then, but it was really about you know being part of a strategic decision on on how to plan your product, yeah. and and the decisions you make. Uh, because it's actually doing life cycle assessment is something you assess a product yeah. on its environmental impacts when it's already there or when it's already quite developed. Yeah. So it's very hard then to make substantial changes. Because you can only make an assessment if you have the data. You yeah. need data first. Yeah. So, so that was sort of the, 
the trap you fall into then is like first you need to have the product then you can improve it but but you never get to any kind of serious improvement and that's why i said you need to go to the strategic level yeah, yeah. Uh, and and there are tools needed for that as well yeah because so uh you you said i found a purpose and i was <laughs> sort of wandering around <laughs> yeah well i think i was around that time also uh, studying and uh uh, I, so when, you, when you're at a party explaining what you do, uh -huh. you say, yeah, I do industrial design, I ma make teapots and chairs and you know, stuff like that. And then sustainability is, is not a, is, is very hard because you're, you're yeah. always adding to the mess. <laughs> what do you mean adding to the mess? So every product you add to the mix is another product. Yeah. It's like fighting for peace as a... Some might say. Fighting for peace. Yeah. Well, I, w I well, that's that's a very negative phrase. Yeah, no, no, yeah. that's it. So, yeah. and that's life cycle analysis is a very negative way of yeah. sort of. So the the thing is there. Well, the thing is there, and we need to improve it. But I would argue that it's not such a problem that we design stuff, but we need to design better stuff, right? So, yeah. so that is my positive frame. Yeah. So I wouldn't say fighting for peace. I would say let's let's just do things different. Yeah. And uh, and. If you d and I have no problem with designing, but we can do so much better. Yeah, yeah. and you can, and the value can be different, maybe. So the, the it, it's not in the buying of the product that you get your satisfaction, but in different moments. And sometimes you need to buy stuff. It's yeah. also fine. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to be moralistic here. Just a warning. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the thing is, personally, I, I get sort of, I get great enjoyment out of buying yeah. something. So do I sometimes. Yes, yeah, yeah. and and uh, and I try to sort of find it. So I try to find enjoyment in renting something, or you know, or using something, or so the whole notion of not owning something. There's a, there's a liberation. Uh, it, it's a liberating thought, right? Yes. Not another yeah. thing that is in my shed. Exactly. Yeah, but it, it needs to come at the right moment and at uh, at uh, the right maybe the right phase in your life. So yeah. so it it won't work always. There's not one size fits all. No. So, so I've enjoyed using Mobike, for instance. Yes, um, although it's sort of a cardio yeah, it's exercise, right? Yeah, it's hard work. You have to yeah. do many yeah. rotations yeah. For, uh, for a little distance. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah. I, I tried to look at it in a positive way, but I was thinking like, goodness gracious, can't they do something about these bikes? Yes, yeah. so I, I, I was one of the first OV feeds users, oh, yeah. OV yeah. bike yeah. users, yeah. and uh, I think they are amazing and awesome. And Way ahead, yeah. And actually, the, the person doing Mobike in the Netherlands is actually from OV Feeds. Really? He, he started OV Bike, yeah. So oh it's wow, the I same didn't know person, this. yeah. Oh, so, and, and you can notice some sort of tiny things that is not in the product, but in sort of the surrounding, the way you are guided towards a good parking spot, all that stuff. So, it's a good service. So, I like it. Um, and so, so you, uh, so you, you, you studied uh, here, did your PhD mm -hmm. here, and then you stayed here to teach. No, no, no. I was quite, I was quite done with research because I spent like three years writing stuff uh, in an in a design environment. Yeah. So I was the weird one, mm -hmm. just d producing letters instead of s products. Yeah. And, uh, and I was quite sick and tired of research, to be honest. So I, uh, I was not going to go back to university <laughs> <laughs> if I could help it. I know the feeling. <laughs> I so I went to work for the Netherlands Design Institute. Oh, okay, uh, yes. In Amsterdam, yeah. which was then, uh, well, I think today it's called the Nieuwe Institute. Yeah, so it it's has in morphed Rotterdam a couple of times. Now. Yeah, it's in Rotterdam. It was then in Amsterdam, Netherlands Design Institute. It then morphed into Premzela. Yeah. And then it went, it became the Nieuwe Institute. But it's the same sort of thinking. And... Um, and I was manager of sustainability there, and my job basically was to connect research to practice, and that was a wonderful role to have. Yeah. So we organized workshops and roundtables and conferences and, and exhibitions. And did you notice that, uh, so this was uh, targeted at other designers? Yes, right? and at companies. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, companies that, that employ designers yes. or do design. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, uh, and at governments as well, by the way. Oh, yeah. governments as well. Yeah. And are they all eager to work w with uh, sort of with the notion of sustainability and uh, so are they uh, did they want to listen to the well the ones that came yes yeah <laughs> otherwise they wouldn't have come so yes yeah, so well there's always the front runners yeah uh, I think nowadays um, in those days it was still quite niche 
nowadays we it's mainstream mm -hmm. so doing sustainability has become mainstream very rapidly doing yes. and mm, also because of the whole concept of circular economy which yeah. is really caught on which is in a way you could argue it's a different way of framing sustainability um, yeah but the word sustainability sort of suggests let's uh, let's moderate whereas circular means let's try to find solutions for every problem we cause or sort of let's try to make it work as a circle right so yeah. let's find smart solutions oh, it's interesting that you that you equate sustainability with moderation yeah but that uh, but th th of course that is that's one way that you could indeed it would help well yeah, so, so sustainability is sort of not, not so much in i mean just cutting out all the waste out of the systems that we have would yeah. be an amazing step forward. And I'm, I'm always a bit careful with words like moderation because they some to seem to imply that you and I should, you know, consume less. Less. Yeah. Yes. Um, which we probably should. But I'm, I'm, I don't like playing the blame game too much. Yeah. And I think actually that sustainability is a systemic problem and that we should tackle it. It's extremely complex. Maybe it's not even a problem, to be honest. Well, Maybe it's, it's because a problem you can solve. But sustainability, or, or at least this whole transition that we are in, yeah. is, is just a situation and we have to deal with it. It's yeah. a very complex transition that we are going through at the moment. And we need to find ways through this. I, I, there's uh, actually a Dutch comic who described uh, sustainability or global warming as the the earth has a fever yeah the people are the bacteria are the infection <laughs> oh we need and to so be wiped out so they're right? heating yeah, yeah. it up yeah. to <laughs> get rid of them right oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's negative it was yeah. a joke thankfully yeah. yeah 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 um no but the nice thing about circular is that it's sort of that it it, it implies uh, speed and innovation, whereas sustain uh, implies sort of mm -hmm. moderation and uh, keeping lower ga gas, sort of, you know, sustain speed means sort of uh, keep it. So I sort of, that's my... Yeah, I guess that's what, what makes it so attractive to many industries as yeah. well, that the idea of abundance, so as long as you cycle everything, you can keep keep producing and keep consuming yeah. at the high speed. Right? Speed it up. <laughs> speed that true, circle. Of course, that's completely untrue. And, uh, and uh, that won't work, uh, the, the unfortunately. Um, uh, but, um, but, just, but just cycling is, is a good thing in itself. Yeah, and thinking about uh, all, the, all, the, all the waste you're yeah. creating and yeah. what are, are, are we going to do with this is an interesting challenge. Yeah, yeah. So, so packaging, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that students at, the, at our faculty don't like to do packaging design. I mean, it's not automatically, it's, it is an elective, but it's not popular yet. Okay. But I think the, sort of there's amazing opportunities in making a sustainable, circular uh, pa packaging, sort of reusable or uh, things that can help uh, sort of k keep it going because yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. all the all the products that are being made, I, they are also um, all the components are also being brought in in packaging. Yeah. And then being put together, yeah. and then there's waste. Yeah, packaging is one one of the hardest ones, I think, probably, uh, because we do need it. Yes. To into it, to keep the system of our going, and of course we can yeah. try to reuse it as much as we can, recycle it where we can, maybe biodegrade it where we can, yeah. shift from fossils to bio as a, as, a, as a base for yeah. these materials, um, cut out a lot of overpackaging. Yeah. So there's many things that we can do and, uh, and it's happening already. So obviously the packaging industry has taken quite a few steps towards, towards this, thanks to the whole ocean plastic debate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, so that, that brings me to uh, uh, sustainability now being sort of a, a pillar of the TU Delft as a whole, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. And and all the faculties embracing it. And um, uh, do you see sort of what do you see the role of, of your group within the sort of the, the whole uh, uh, the, the whole Delft research society? Well, I think one uh, there was just there was a TU Delft vision on sustainability published recently. At yeah. least it's it's been written now, and I, I had a look at it. It was very f and I it contributed to it as well. But it was fascinating because it's so much about energy. Yeah. So TU Delft really takes energy as um, 
as the as the um, as the main focal point. And not mobility or uh, well, that, that's another I, pillar. Yes. No, we, we, you need a lot of energy for mobility, yes. right? So it, it comes with that. Yeah. But the energy is the focal. And then I, I try to, 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 at least I added a paragraph on resources, saying materials, guys, materials mining, mining, extraction, recycling, reuse. Uh, you've forgotten about all these physical things. Energy is extremely important because of course energy, burning of fossils in order to create electricity, energy, um, is what cre creates climate change. So it's an extremely important one to address. But mining all these resources and not recycling them or reusing them is also a huge contributor to, to the CO2 emissions. Yeah. So we need to address both. And they totally agreed. But that would be probably our focus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and, uh, so basically, yeah. uh, energy the is focus. not the most important. No, no, it is, it is extremely yeah, but in, important. Within our faculty, yeah. Yeah. sort of, you know, in, in, uh, in electrical engineering and all the other faculties, uh, energy might be sort of the focus point, whereas ours would be more all this plastics, wood, cork. Somebody needs to look at those things as well, and, and it's ex um, it's so extreme. Can I give you an example of the complexity of sustainability? Because well, you have been talking about packaging and yeah. all this, all these little elements and aspects. But I would like to sketch, if I can, um, how complex it is with resources. Yes. So just taking the, the 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 smartphone. Yeah. Let's take a very simple product. Simple. <laughs> oh. Not a, not a lot of moving parts. Not a lot of so <laughs> it's it's a everybody has it, everybody yeah. knows it, everybody uses it. So uh, how do you assess? How do you make sense of a smartphone? So you would have to start thinking about you know uh, what if we would like to make get a sense of the sustainability impact of a smartphone? Yes. So I would probably start by looking at okay, so we have the smartphone, but that's not it because we need a charger, and in the life of the smartphone maybe two chargers or yeah. have one at the office, one at home. So I need headsets. I probably use a couple uh, in the life of my phone and, and some some covers. So that would be sort of the, 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 the smartphone system for me. Yeah, yeah. As a, from a consumer perspective. From a consumer perspective, exactly. So, and then I would start looking at, you know, how are these products produced? So what materials are extracted for it? It's amazing how many, because yes. like half of the periodic table of elements is in a smartphone. Yes, so gold. Coltan is the most famous one. Gold, Actually, gold on, tantle, I'm currently yeah, tantle, yeah. And iridium, iridium, I yeah. Oh, you have them all. Yeah, yeah well, not all. <laughs> Neodymium. Yeah. A lot of them. And, and uh, so to, uh, I'm actually currently talking to, uh, to uh, Dier, the Rotterdam Zoo, uh -huh. Diergaarde Blijdorp, okay. because uh, their gorilla, uh, Bokito, uh -huh. is basically that they're the species of the mountain gorilla is being, uh, uh, is, is, uh, is being terrorized or is being uh, endangered mainly because of the coltan uh, uh, mining. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and that's not, so we are all thinking about the mining as, well, of course, extraction, which you shouldn't be doing, but also the, the, the slavery that is associated, child, child labor, labor yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Sure. And then there's but, the gorillas. <laughs> but then we forget the gorillas. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you see the complexity yeah, yeah. here, like so many different metals and, and, and materials. All the aspects, not just the environmental issues, the social issues as well. Yeah, because then you go to China yeah. to get it produced. So yeah, and so it's transported all over the world. You get all the elements, and then it's put together, produced, um, assembled, shipped all over the world again, and then it's used uh, for a period, probably not long enough. Um, and then at the end of life, we hope that we can manage it to refurbish it, maybe recycle it. But then, if you look at the use part alone. Then you start to realize that this phone is just part of a system, of course. So you have the whole system of of the whole, the whole, the whole internet, the wireless system. So we have the what are they called? These antennas. Yeah, the, the 5G, 3G, yeah, yeah, whatever. 4G, 5G. Antennas. There's the huge data centers. Uh, there are satellites to for the GPS. So this entire infrastructure, a fraction of it, is used to power your phone, right? Yeah. To make so that's all part of the system of the smartphone, and um, and that's just the first order uh, assessment that we make. So yeah. that. In a life cycle analysis, that would be sort that of that would be what we would try to map and try to get a sense of what the impact is, yeah. and uh, and that we would probably try to do in time. So it would be dynamic LCA. So to see how you know how the life of smartphones is developing, how the how the power consumption is developing, and understand a bit about how this changes over time. But that's just the first order. Yeah. And there's a second order effect, 
which is basically the effect use of a smartphone has on all the things that we do, like work and leisure and um, uh, you name it. Um, social. Uh, social so aspects, yeah, yeah. So, so for instance, mm, uh, paper, paper consumption. So because we have books on our, on our smartphones, uh, we, use, we have less paper books. So that's, uh, that's an effect. Yeah, so it could be positive, yeah, right? Could be, could be positive. Um, when you look at paper production in the world, it actually has gone up again because of the fact that we now start ordering stuff from Amazon all the time and that's all packaged. In cardboard, yeah. In cardboard. So paper paper industry has actually found a new market. So less books, more packaging. So paper industry is actually in a growth curve again. Yeah. yeah. Why you would have hoped and expected that we would be we would have the paperless office by now. Yeah. And uh, it's just not yet happening, or maybe never happening. I don't know. And the same with transportation. We would all we all thought that by by using video conferencing, as yeah. we called it then, and now yeah. it's Skype or WhatsApp or whatever, and um, that we would be traveling less. Well, probably not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we are traveling more than ever. Uh, partly because we now can connect to the entire world, which is amazing. Yeah. And then you and think, oh, I might want to go there. Yeah. Exactly. And 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 it's 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 actually amazing that we can and it's so important to create understanding for different cultures so I'm, I'm not against it but it's just to to be able to map this is so important to see you know where is this second order effects then there's the third order so another layer of complexity on top of this so sort of the the consequence of long-term consequences of traveling of, or of behavior change yeah, yeah so how is it changing our society the way we the way we interact yeah but the fact that we have to be present or that we are supposed to be uh, connected for 24 seven, right? So those things and what are the health effects of that? Yeah. Those questions are asked on the third, the third level. Yeah. So, so just to sketch how amazingly complex uh, this yeah. resource focus is and, and sustainability. So it's, it's so difficult to give simple answers yeah. to questions. Yeah, of course, you say a simple product like a smartphone uh, actually, in the first uh, uh, series of this podcast, we talked to Jasper and he said, I wish it wasn't inven invented <laughs> at all <laughs> because of all the social issues. Yeah. And so you could imagine sort of th that one being uh, uh, the odd one out. Yeah, but maybe. of course, the car it's is the most infamous uh, example of, uh, of uh, uh, so where we're already living in the third order effect intensively, right? Our, our houses, our way of living, our uh, yeah, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, the whole suburban uh, culture uh, that has sprung up, in fact yes. that, that suburbs that, that force you because of the car that we have started to move away in, and that we now have a problem yeah. in connecting all the suburbs. Yeah, that's a real issue. Yeah, that has actually for a very long time it will, it will still influence the way we live and travel yeah. Yeah, because it's so set in stone, literally. Yeah. So, so, uh, so you say it's very complex, and then um, the intentions of most designers and especially students are. Th so there's no, uh, there's nobody in uh, in in our university probably who says, uh, ah, it's just a hype and it'll pass. No, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, so that means that, and students are very eager to learn more about it. And you've actually set up a, a MOOC that is a, yeah. a, a, a multi... A massive open online course. Yes. Yeah. And you, so you can go there yeah. and learn about sustainability. Circular yeah. economy. Circular yeah. economy. So, so what do you learn uh, when you go there? Is it the life cycle analysis still or is that the mm -hmm. second order and the... Um, circular economy is um, with, yeah, it's probably more of a second order kind of thing. Yes. So we basically we talk about the whole concept, the whole principle behind the circular economy. So the thinking in, in cycles, so what happens to a product after first use and can you move to second use, a third use, a fourth use, can, like a cat has nine lives. Yes. So can you have a product with nine lives? So what does that mean? What does it mean for business if you want that? And, uh, and what does it mean for the design of a product? And what does it mean if you start doing things like repair and remanufacturing? And what is the systemic effects of all that? So that's questions we ask in this MOOC. Yes. But on a very generic level, it's very basic. Yeah. And, uh, but that's, that's lovely because we, we have seven weeks in which we treat all these different topics. But at the end of each week, we do an in-depth so there you can actually start discussing the difficult topics, yes. like planned obsolescence, to name one. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and the whole idea of access models, like we were just talking about not owning stuff, 
but having access to it. Yeah. Is there a dark side to access? Is one of the questions we ask. Sort of the, the dangers of the gig economy <laughs> or stuff like that. And the Uber, the, the Uberization Uber of the yeah. world, yeah. yeah. So the dark side of that. So it's good that we can discuss these issues, these more ethical and moral issues yes. as well. It's not, a, it's not just a ta-da. No, so, yeah. so the MOOC consists of a couple of so, so videos where you, you sort of share knowledge and, mm -hmm. and quizzes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then there's also people talking amongst each other, discussing things. Yeah, we no well, yeah, a little bit of that, but we mostly try to discuss stuff with the learners. Yes. So we uh, we actually invite them to join the forums and and have a debate with them online, which is much more interesting than watching talking heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A, yeah so yeah. it's a lot of uh, yeah. uh, stu basically students as the but the sort of people that join the MOOC talking to each other yeah. and you being sort of moderators yeah. in that. We try to moderate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. It's amazing to have to be there behind your screen, knowing that you are connecting to like a thousand learners. Yes. So that's that's that, that we call them learners, not oh, yeah. students. Yeah, that's good. That's some jargon, um, and and that's that's quite a, an interesting feeling actually, because it's very abstract. You don't mm. see them, you don't hear them, but still they're there. They're uh, basically just profile pictures with yeah. li little statistics, letters they write. Right? Yeah, yeah. Statistics, yeah. Yeah, it's strange, strange experience to teach like that. Yes. Yeah, but it's good to have that experience. And these people are usually uh, from the field or already studied something. They're not very, very, very different. So, but many indeed, like you say, like they are, they are trying to get some knowledge and understanding of circular economy because they think it will help their careers. Yes. Or because they are retired and they want to learn, to keep up to date. Oh, or that's also good. Or because they. Um, they're consultants, and they think they can uh, they can add to their skill set. Yes. So you see many different kinds. So, yeah. but let me say they're beyond the twenty four age in general. Yes. Yes. And then you also teach a lot in the bachelor yes. of our uh, uh, yeah. for industrial design. Yes. Um, and what do you so do you take lessons from the MOOC and bring them bring that to them? Yes, yeah, so I try to blend the, at least one of my courses in the bachelor is a, is a blended course. So we, the MOOC is part of the program. So. Yeah. They, they get uh, a new episode, a new week in the MOOC every week, so they have to follow the MOOC yeah. in the in rhythm. And then I pick up the two days later in a, in a lecture where we actually start discussing the concepts that were discussed in the MOOC. And, so so and are they being mixed with people from outside or is it just them? Uh, I, I always try to get some of the discussion from the MOOC and yeah. bring it back in the classroom and then take it from there. Yeah, yeah. And, then, uh, and then build on that. Or have a discussion on do you like this comment and what do you think of it and do you think this is a good example of, of, a, of you know a product in a in a bio cycle so those kind of discussions mm -hmm. yeah that's quite appreciated and um, uh, like half of the students really follow this MOOC very loyally and the other half is a bit more laid back that's yeah sure that's normal yeah that's, uh, the the um, that's sort of what you can get out of students in general uh, yeah. and especially if it's yeah. if it's not a elective because you also do an elective. No, this is the elective. Oh, the this is the oh and yeah. then there's still uh, there's still there's still a compulsory course where we try to teach the basics yeah. of design for sustainability. So try to, to lift a little bit of the complexity I just sketched with yeah. the with the smartphone and give them at least sense of that world yeah. behind a simple product. Hmm. And then so and I teach in the uh, masters mm -hmm. of uh, uh, mm -hmm. of ID um, of our of our faculty and these industrial designers I noticed they come from all around the world and they know about industrial design engineering in Delft also because of their fame of sustainability and I noticed that they would love to learn more about sustainability uh, and uh, so sometimes I uh, I give so you actually participate in courses you see that the hunger for knowledge is sort of never enough and yeah. then it's yeah. very hard to satisfy. Yeah. Yes, one of the questions I get asked most often, I'm not sure if it's the same with you, but uh, where do I begin? Yeah. Where do I, I do, it's so much, I don't know where to start. And uh, that's one of the hardest questions to answer actually, because I'm not even sure that I have an answer. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, 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 the Lord, so the, what I usually try is to tell them like, this field is so big, and I explained about how complex it is. So, so the only way to, to start engaging with it is by taking a specific um, vision, if you like, or mm. worldview or perspective and, and engage with that. So for instance, you can start take- Start digging. Well, you can take circular economy, which yeah. is in a way a, a worldview or a perspective on, yes. on sustainability, if you like. Well, that's how I frame it. Uh, you can take um, biomimicry. Yeah, yeah. 
it's so how, how learning from nature basically yeah. so how of nature how how does nature do it nature is sustainable by by definition so maybe we can learn from that is, is, is nature oh, I, 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 while i said this i was questioning myself because <laughs> i think uh those dinosaurs wouldn't agree with you <laughs> oh, well they've had that time <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> I mean, I'm not, nothing has to last forever really no 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 and it's uh, but i mean by and large, uh, look at how long life, life, not so much species, but life has survived yes, on sure. this planet. So, um, I like the, do you know the paleontologist, uh, uh, Stefan J. Gold? Oh, I, I'm a great fan of his work. Yeah. I, I have yeah. a signed yeah. DVD, uh, ROM, <gasps> CD-ROM of him. Really? Yeah, he died. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I know. And he was part of a, a, a beautiful accident, and yeah. prachtig yeah. ongeluk, a uh, VPO series. Yeah. series. Yeah. That's where we yeah. know him from, probably. No, Maybe no, I read his work before that. Oh. I read it while I was writing my, while I was finishing my PhD. That's I, had, I had this rhythm. I would write for three, three, four, three quarters of an hour, and then for one quarter of an hour, I could read Stephen Jay Gould. And then I would get back to writing because oh, I just love his writing. He is such a great, um, he's such a wordsmith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so but also when he talks, yeah. talked. Yeah, yeah talked. Uh, yeah. So, he, uh, I, so I physically met him uh, in Amsterdam and uh, he, he had this great quote that he said uh, that bacteria are the pinnacle of, of, um, of ev uh, evolution yeah. and that we are a dribble of yeah, nature. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. Because we are in Amsterdam, yeah. Yeah. he said, imagine you're drunk and you're having a drink at one of those cafes and you're randomly walking left and right. And then there's a, there's a uh, canal. Uh -huh. how, <laughs> how big is the chance you will fall into the canal? 100%. At some point you will take 10 steps to the right. And then he, then he said, so this, this is what happens. Bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. Then you have dinosaurs. Too complex, falls into oh. the canal. <laughs> goes back to bacteria. So that's, and, that, and we are a dribble of nature. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and what he does, he fights against this deterministic idea that we, uh, that we are the pinnacle of everything. And you see that thinking so much still. That's, uh, and it's, it's scary, actually, to, to yeah, put ourselves on a pedestal like that. So to put ourselves on a pedestal. And that's actually what got us in this whole situation, right, with sustainability. Because we are so damn arrogant that we can think we can control everything. Yeah, let's, uh, let's fix it. Especially let's engineers, it. right? Yeah, exactly. So that's why I try to say it's not a problem. Uh, because you can't fix it. It's a given. It's given and we have to sort of manage it or, or, or not even manage. We have to sort of try to, 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 to dance with it maybe even more. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like we have to sort of find a way to coexist with, with the rest of the world in, in which, in this, and the world will change. The state of, of ecosystems is changing already. Yes. And uh, I read a paper which was, I love the title, it was called Deep Adaptation. Yes. Which said something about what's going to what we're going to be doing soon because okay. we are going to have to adapt to the fact that we ha are now in a in a climate in a, in a changed climate already yes. and, uh, and so we have to do everything we can to to stop further change yeah. but the fact is it's there yeah yeah and so and, um, and then there's so you talked about acid rain that was a big thing <laughs> hole in the ozone layer was a big thing and all of them were sort of well, not fixed but yeah sort of came to pass and uh, yeah, there's still a hole in the ozone layer, yes. but uh, but it's slightly smaller. Yeah. And uh, and acid rain, uh, well, because we put filters on on chimneys, it sort of well, we catch the the problem before it becomes a problem. Yeah. There were the easy problems really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were maybe we sort of extrapolating now. We have fixed this, we fixed that, yeah, so we can also yeah. fix uh, global warming, right? Yeah, the geoengineering idea, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. Let's put big screens in the in space and then block sunlight. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> then we will cool down. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Let's. Uh, so, at least that is not what we'll be doing. No. We'll be deep adapting. Deep adapting. So yeah. I, I, and the, as a product designer, that's a thing you can do very yeah. well, right? You I can think that's change behavior. A bit. A bit. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A tiny bit. Make people happy with that's other things. That's good. That would be good. Yeah. 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 I like that better than talking about changing behavior. Making people think about what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And also, and also, I mean, I think that that is a u that we have we have power as a, as a group, not as individuals, but as a, as a product design discipline, that we can if we if we if we play it smart, we can create a lot of awareness, like the Boyan slot thing with the yes. ocean plastic. I mean. The whole idea that we can ever get the ocean, the plastic out of the ocean is slightly naive. But the awareness he has created with 
all this, has actually pushed companies to start, you know, taking plastics recycling and plastics reuse and packaging very serious. Yes. And they're now making covenants and, and agreements on, on you know, reducing, and the European Commission is actually saying no more straws, no more plastic cups, no more plastic plates, stopping it. So there's things happening which are amazing. And yes. we probably won't sol solve the ocean plastic problem, but we hopefully can stop getting more plastic into the ocean. Yeah. At least that's my hope. And, 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 that's, and, and that's also, the other thing... If we would, uh, if, if, well, uh, Bayern Slot could have been from our faculty, right? He could have been a design student. Yeah. He wasn't, but uh, he isn't, I must say. But, uh, but that's something we can do. Yeah. We will be good at it, I think. And, and, and the other thing about that is the sort of the approach, which is sort of an agile trial and yeah. error, uh, not fix things and break, no. break yeah. fast, but more sort of try out and be prepared for uh, failure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and stay with it, right? So it's not something you do and then go away and try something else and then go away. So it's something you have to, this, this, if you want to, want to dance with the system, you have to stick with it yeah. and see it through. So, keep so monitoring change. And, so yeah. let's go back to dancing. Yeah. So how do you learn uh, to, da yeah, to that's dance? That's a big question. So I noticed that my, so the yeah. students, where to begin, right? Yeah. They also say, give, give me a solution. And there, 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 and they, if you tell them there is none, they, that's that's people hard. accept it, yeah. but how can you start dancing? Yeah, well, that I started answering that because then we got yeah. Sorry. sidetracked by Stephen Jay Gould, but, uh, but you know, ta start, start thinking about these big perspectives like cradle to cradle, circular economy, biomimicry, either one, I don't care, sustainable development goals, they're all good starting points yes. because they give direction. Mm -hmm. They help you, you know, take a slice out of the complexity pie, if you yes. like. So if you look at it as a pie with all these layers, just to you, help you take a slice but out of it. And then there's <laughs> always somebody with another uh, frame <laughs> Fine. going like, yeah. hey, that's but you're okay. not solving this. Oh, well, that's to say you can't solve everything. No. So, and you're actually maybe you aren't solving everything. No. Uh, we aren't even solving something. No, no, no. Trying to deal with it. And um, so, so, so that would be my answer. So to take any one of those that you like best, and, uh, and, and, and then use it to begin. And, and at least these, these frames, these world views give a, give a starting point. Yeah. For instance, Creative to Creative is extremely clear. They say, you know, waste equals food and uh, use the sun and, uh, and respect diversity, some of these things. So there are three and they're completely clear. So if, if that's what you, what you feel attracted to and you're inspired by it, that's yeah. the most important thing, then go for it. And you can't, it won't be perfect, but that's, that's not a problem. No. And yeah. that, that's also you pointed that uh, mm. book a couple of times. Oh yeah, yeah. in the it's products that in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, in, in products that last, which is a book uh, published by Bis, right? Or uh, will be, yeah. Or this will was this was published uh, by ourselves by Tio Delft. Yes. But uh, because it was the result of a scientific project. Yes. But the next edition, which will come out somewhere in June, it will be published by Bis. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and in in that there are sort of the different frames are being presented? No, this is just one. One, purely just the circular just one. Just the one, yeah. yeah. Purely and the circular one. And, and the, the, the book in its size and layout reminds me of our Delft Design Guide. Was that intentionally done? Yes. Yeah. So the, the Delft Design Guide is a blue book, right? Yes. And it, it has loads and loads of different methods in it. Uh, but what we missed there was the thinking about uh, end of life of a product. Yeah. So, so we made this orange book, uh, it's a complementary color. Yeah. And um, I think, right? Mm -hmm. it? Sure. Yeah, let's so take probably, it. Yes, let's <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, and, and actually, we, we, s well, we say it actually in, on the back. We say, this book starts where most books on product development <laughs> end. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> deep adaptation, deep <laughs> stab. Mm -hmm. so, so, and, uh, so actually, so we actually start talking about the, the opportunities that exist in the next product universe, I love that sentence. Yeah. So, and, um, so what happens after the first life of a product? And yes. what, how can you design for it, but how can you make a business out of that as well? Yeah. And who is already doing this and what can we learn from them? Yeah. Yeah, that's what this book is about. So th uh, that is, uh, that is so but that circular economy and cradle to cradle is also in there a bit? Uh, or not not well, too much. Because that also starts at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the, actually I think circular economy is a bit of a, a reframing of cradle to cradle and, and pulling it more towards the business side. Cradle to cradle, of course, was a very strong yeah. and, and very inspiring yes. um, vision. I, I like it a lot. Um, not completely in agreement with it all, but still it has inspired me a lot. 
and, and circular economy takes it a bit too more towards a business perspective and it is it's a bit more detailed uh, Great Scrape is really about recycling. And really about the materials. And really very much about materials. And a bit of energy. Yeah. But not sort of the, the second order effects and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. so we take this a bit more serious in the circular economy perspective. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's, 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 they're all fine. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm so happy with every one of them. Yeah. You're happy with anybody try Any, trying. Anyone trying any one of these perspectives. There's yeah. more, actually, there's the natural step. Yeah. And there's factor 10 engineering and, and there's more so yeah. but um, I just named a few yeah so uh, I actually bought a uh, bought a tapestry from Switzerland uh -huh. uh, that was uh, uh, so I, I I wanted to buy sort of tapestry for the house and they said uh, the the person who sold it to me I specifically said I want this uh -huh. he said uh, there are a couple of things the one thing is, if I sell it to you, you will never buy anything new because it lasts so long. So that's my problem. But that was sort of a sell, of course, just like people selling the Miele washing machines as uh, long lasting. But then he also said it's from a circular. Uh, he didn't really know, but he said this this uh, uh, this uh, factory it comes from really sort of tries to be circular. All the water that comes in comes out cleaner and sort oh, of all those right. notions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. So yeah, is that. Is that sort of is that a, an example of that kind of approach or uh, yeah that's a classic example of the cradle, cradle to cradle yeah, yeah. Where the, but they actually argue that you should not be less bad but you should be good yeah so the not efficient but effective um, and that's I love that frame the reframing yeah and so they argue that the water that goes into that factory comes out cleaner than it was when it went in yeah perfect yes <laughs> I love it great example and and sort of uh, that of course translates also into the price of your products yeah uh, that's good because then you can't fly to Thailand or yeah. to New York for a weekend right that's so it. Uh, perfect let, let people pay and then if uh, people come to your house you say this tapestry will take a will live longer <laughs> than me and doesn't allow me to go to Thailand yeah that's good so that's well done <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> we try, but the the thing is, the most important part of this, all of this, is get, does it sort of you know to paraphrase that uh, cleaner mm -hmm. lady, get, does it give you joy, right? Sort of, does you do you enjoy that? Because you can go to a far away country and still not be happy, or stay home and, and sort of be yeah, happy with what yeah, you're doing. Admire your tapestry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try. <laughs> we try. <laughs> And um, oh, there's something wave. Somebody's oh, waving. We're ten minutes, sort of. We're we're uh, so actually, I was uh, trying to close down. So let's. Um, so one standard thing we ask of all our uh, uh, all the people we talk to is to give some tips ah. that uh, people that that uh, watch or listen this can think about um, and and uh, that take on. So it doesn't have to be related. Of course, everybody should get the products that last. Book. book and visit you on May 10. Yeah. Uh, but then the, the uh, do you have another tip uh, for the, the audience? Yeah, um, uh, the book I'm now reading, or actually re-reading, is uh, and it's and it's very much in line with what I what we were talking about is thinking in systems. Yes. And it's written by Donella Meadows, and she actually very interestingly she was also one of the authors of the 1972 infamous or famous book. Uh, limits to growth. Yeah, the the one that started it all, right? The one that started it all. Yeah. The what's the? It's also uh, the Bros. No, the Paris. No, there was another name. Club for of Rome. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. That they were called like weren't they? The Club of Rome. Yeah. yeah. It was the Club of Rome report or something. Something yeah. like that. And yeah. it was called Limits to Growth. Have you ever read it? No. It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was really shocked when I read. It. I was, I, everybody it was very foreseeing, you mean? Yes, but it was written. It makes total sense, actually. And yeah, but uh, I although the models are relatively simple, but the, the reasoning behind it was really good. But I didn't read it, it because it was too depressive. In yeah, my no, but, uh, but it was in the in the media. It was made to 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 you know as like the doom book, and it was terrible. And but <laughs> when you read it, it's actually very optimistic well, and, and, and in very. Uh, today's day and age, it <laughs> might even be. Uh, so. <laughs> Light <laughs> literature, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, nothing deep adaptation. So what I like about this book is that she tries to explain what systems are and how they work, which is helpful, but also that she gives us places to intervene in the system. Yeah, it's, it's all yeah. wriggled and everything yeah, yeah. in this book. So she, she tries to explain to us, what if you want to change something about the system? So where should you begin? And what are the best points, what are the most likely points that you can actually 
achieve change. So oh. she says there's, there's things that are a little bit helpful. Um, and there's things that are wildly helpful, but of course much more difficult. And there are <laughs> factors, sort of, you know, if you change something in an early stage. Yeah. I always have this notion with teaching. Uh, I'm, I find it scary uh -huh. because, you know, I might end up teaching sort of somebody like Mark Zuckerberg who's very successful in a thing that you don't want to be, sort of, and they might be inspired by something you said. Yeah, yeah. And that's scary, <laughs> right? But then yeah, there's also... You never remember what it was that you said, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. yeah. But as teachers, we always claim yeah. the work of our students, right? Sort of the success. No, but, and then the, there's this other thing that I, I find it extremely valuable that sometimes you give somebody a push and it sort of it resonates, not yeah. like the next day yeah. or when you do the exam, but in 10 years or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's of course the beauty of being a teacher. Yeah, and so that's uh, also changing the system, right? It, yeah, and and yeah, absolutely. And uh, but what she says is the most, the most likely to change the system, which I like actually. Uh, yeah. Mm, where is it? Ah, so paradigms. So, so that the mindset out of which the system arises. So yeah. that's what I was talking about, cradle to cradle, so to Those are paradigms you could yeah. argue in her in her words, and then she talks about transcending paradigms. So actually. Changing the, changing a paradigm is actually, <laughs> she said that's one that's very nice. But the best thing actually is not to have a paradigm at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I'm still trying to get my head around that the, one. Th that's it. So yeah. I'm not that mature yet. But say she says Buddhist. She calls Buddhist and enlightenment and uh, so basically detaching yourself from the world. So Taking away the paradigms. So one change of paradigm is not owning a car anymore, right? Sort of, or is that too shallow? Oh, but no, no, the whole notion it might be if you bring it. Yeah, that yeah, would so be a nice one. The yeah. urban living yeah. and no ownership, <laughs> minimalist. That sort of. I uh, hope she doesn't mean that we have to go back to caves or something. No, I no. hope not. No, it's not. That's not safe. But that's a, also because our new bachelor is supposed to. We're supposed to be teaching not products anymore, but sort of. Complex systems. systems, right? Yeah, complex systems. Yeah, so this should probably be uh, obligatory literature, compulsory reading for the bachelor students. Yeah, just one question. Are you? It's called a primer. Are yeah. you reading it the same way you read uh, Gold? So uh, you you work and then you allow yourself to be reading uh, this. I find this slightly more uh, challenging. Actually, yes. it's an, uh, Gold is just pure enjoyment, but yes. actually in a, in a good way. Yeah. Uh, because he does change your worldview, and in a way, this book changes worldview as well. But it's it's uh, it has a bit of mathematics in there, so it takes me a bit more time to work through. It's not as easy. No. But uh, but I love it. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I, I also have a tip, uh, which is a, a so software tip. Um, I've so when I started the uh, be, uh, getting on the internet in mm -hmm. very early 1994, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, there was already sort of the notion of a wiki wiki, and everybody now knows wiki, now knows Wikipedia. But the wiki wiki is sort of a very open source editing system. Everybody could edit. Mm -hmm. There were no passwords, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And uh, and I've always wanted to use it, but and I've found many solutions, but it never worked out. Now there is a commercial service called Notion. It's a software platform, and you can build your own sort of documentation. But it allows you. But it also looks amazing, and it feels amazing, and it has great templates and sort of it works like a charm. So it's like a Wikipedia. So you can. So I'm currently using it to uh, to document everything for sort of the backend system of my course. Wow. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, it's a very fluent system. The only problem is I wanted to pay for it, and then there's this whole system of uh, of paying for it using uh, every user has to pay stuff, and I just want to give people money. <laughs> and so and th and then there, so I said, do you have an educational version? No, they said you can give a referral code, and now so I, I actually I, I'll try to ask Mark if uh, if in the uh, my <laughs> referral code can be in there, then then I can measure a bit how many people actually read that. <laughs> And how many? And then I get this. this and then I get these awful <laughs> credits because that's also how I got uh, Dropbox. I mm -hmm. sort of Dropbox started like that. You know, you could sort of give other people mm -hmm. uh, on board, and it's like a uh, it's a very bad paradigm because it's sort of like a uh, like a pyramid a scheme, right? You you tell others to use it. Yeah. So I. I personally, I, I don't, if you don't want to use the code, please don't do it. But I think it's interesting to see. And you'll basically be uh, locking me into a system that I 
then want to get out of at a certain point because that's what Dropbox is now, right? Everybody yeah, has I, their Dropbox and wants to get rid food. of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it's full. Yeah. you don't want to pay anymore. I want anymore. to empty it, but yeah. in yeah. how actually? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a Lost paradigm. Them. Yeah. So let's yeah. get me into trouble again. So Notion is an interesting uh, software application. Um, yeah, with that, we're at the end of this uh, podcast. Uh, I, I always want to thank uh, Mark the Call of Communication for producing this and uh, organizing this location and Geraldo Solisa for New Media Center, all the technical stuff. It's so great that I only have to show up and do an interview <laughs> because that's the best part. It's the best part. Um, so, uh, thank you all. If you have comments, please send them to a.i.keller at tudelft.nl. Again, go to the inaugurational there's also probably a, a, a reception a, at the end. Yeah, and in the, but <laughs> during the day there are speakers coming over. No, or? no, no, no. It's just purely you two. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, both interesting. Uh, uh, I, I enjoyed the uh, the inaugural lectures of all the professors of practice yeah, so much. Yeah. It's like a yeah. pecha kucha, right? Yeah. And you're going to be doing that as well. Mm -hmm. And I only have to stand up once. Well, a half an hour pecha kucha though. Yeah, yeah, uh, longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, so with that, thank you all and uh, hope to see you again sometimes. <laughs>